Hello there, it's Claire Bowditch here, thrilled to introduce yet another inspiration bomb from Big Hearted Business. And this one is part two of a, one of our most popular ever bombs that came from Grammy Award winning musician Wally DeBacca, otherwise known as Gautier, and Tash Parker, who's also a musician and an artist, as you will soon see. This is a ripper, quality, beauty, information. Oh, you're going to love it. Enjoy yourself very much. I'll see you on the other side. His name is uh, Walter de Bakker, and uh, he, like I say, he's, he's not he's not from uh, Netherlands, but that's okay. Um, I I can still listen to his music sometimes, and I don't think about these things. Um, uh, he will be here, and uh, his uh, his he will be here soon, um, and you'll you can listen to this. I think the world naturally has a lot of wonder in it. There's a lot of really amazing things, you know, to be alive on the planet in a lot of people's experience is a really incredible thing. But then there's also a lot of hardship. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of things that are very unjust, a lot of things that really make us wonder whether life is worth living. And I think music and art, they can really bring incredible energy, positive energy to our life experience, inspire us to do things we didn't think we could do, inspire us out of difficult experiences, help us get over things help us realize that there's something more than what we thought the limits of our world was. I feel constantly excited by the idea that you can be constantly pushing outwards what your worldview is. There's so much out there to experience and, and, and try to understand or just have a glimpse of. And I think music has done that a lot for me over the years, given me a sense that there's something more, something else, an alternative, that there is, that there's just an incredible world of ideas and, and things to explore out there. And I think that has great great value. Yeah, I think an image of success for me is, is a, a balance. I see that a lot in my parents there. They find a great balance, I think, between their interests and between things that I think fundamentally are really important, like being aware of what we do and our energy, how that relates to the people in our lives, our friends, family, our strangers, the globe of people that exist on this planet, and also our immediate environment, being, trying to be more connected to it, being aware of what we do, how we do things in our life, how that affects the environment around us or more broadly in the world. I feel like I don't make a lot of time in my life to um, really probably explore that side of it in terms of um, growing food or I really love being outside. I love the garden. I love whenever the weather is good to be out in the sun or to go to the beach and things like that. The energy that gives me is just really amazing. But I know also um, because of sometimes how much time you know I want to spend, I guess, indulging these obsessions with music and reading, I find that a hard balance. I, I feel like I could make a better balance in my life and I think that should be probably how I should measure success for me in the future in my life. I feel that engaging with the business side of making music, the music industry, I'm still able to, to sort of think of that completely separately from, I guess, what you call the creative side of it. You know, when I'm writing a song or when I'm looking for samples or you know, just anything to do with making a song or a record, even though all these business things creep into it, like what's it going to cost to work with somebody? Do I have that money? Um, uh, what are the implications You know, in a uh, songwriting split if I choose to work with this person? What will that mean for, you know, all those things kind of, they all come in at some stage, but I still feel like I'm able to keep them completely separate, like just be purely driven by what is it that I want to try to make that I want to be really into. Having done so sort of pretty much everything myself for many years, it's a struggle to balance the time to do everything, but uh, I don't think that uh, knowing more about how the music industry works makes it difficult to be creative, you know, to make your music. Unless, uh, I think sometimes maybe it reveals to you, if it does feel like it starts to become a challenge, it's probably only, it's probably just because it's revealing to you that a lot of your motivations are commercial or are to do with the business. And so... I feel like I have seen that. I've seen, say, approached by musicians who are asking me, you know, how did you do this? And I want to know how you can, say, get your career off the ground. And then I feel like maybe over time, as it seems, they sense, you know, the obstacles get greater and greater to, say, find commercial success within the industry. Their motivation lessens. And it makes me wonder, is that because the only reason you were writing songs or wanting to make a record is because you wanted to sell a certain number of copies of your record or win awards? Was that so significant as a marker of the end point you had in mind that when you thought that was actually too hard or that it wasn't going to happen that you weren't interested anymore. I feel the same way about, um, I don't know, say music practice, uh, the technical side, whether it's of production or of uh, 
learning an instrument about harmony, songwriting, things like that. I remember a friend when I was a teenager who sort of, I asked him, oh, you're really into music and you love going to concerts. Have you ever thought about learning an instrument or, you know, getting into music in some way, into making it? He said, no, no, I really, I, you know, I think if I learnt anything about it, it would just really lessen my experience of music. Uh, if I learnt an instrument, I'd start to know all this stuff. I wouldn't want to know. Music wouldn't be able to just wash over me and inspire me in the same way. And I felt... I understood where he was coming from, but I completely disagree now. I feel like, you know, the more you learn about anything, just the more amazing it makes it seem. Because for me, certainly the the more I maybe might be able to rabbit on about to be able to articulate how producing a track works or how, you know, the mechanics of harmony in a song or I don't know what the notes in a melody I'm singing or that I'm hearing in, in something, it doesn't make those magic moments any less magical for me. I still find, you know, the music that really stirs me deeply. I could rip it apart in any number of ways. Look at, you know, the, the technology used, the chords behind it, the, I don't know, the broader harmonic structure in which it's written, or, you know, the, I could even become more kind of physically familiar with it in terms of, like, learning how to play it, singing the song. And yet when I experience that recording, if that's a piece that really moves me, I still find it has that magic absolutely unrelated to that, maybe that greater knowledge I have about the mechanics of how it's put together. So I think for me that really proves that um, similarly with the music industry, like it's not going to sort of ruin the magic of music for you or maybe even ruin the magic of when you experience good things in the industry when they, when they go well, how that's a great experience. Um, in fact, it's much more likely to happen if you know more about how the industry works that you'll be able to navigate it expertly and successfully and hopefully find some satisfaction in the fact that you've done that rather than maybe getting hoodwinked by things or, you know, realising that deals don't work the way you thought they would and that, you know, the end result of your opportunity or your royalty income or things like that are actually not what you thought they would be, you know, in the negative. That's the way I feel about life in general. The more perspectives and the more information you can have, it can only benefit you to think about them short of maybe just being overwhelmed by it because there is so much information in the world. Maybe the challenge these days is just to curate the potential world of information that is out there for you to navigate, to know that I think on some level, the more you take in, probably the better off you will be because the more perspectives, the more you'll have a, an ability to navigate those possible ways of thinking about things and to maybe apply them or to choose what feels right for you. Um, but yeah, but curating how and when you take in that information and sort of the focus you have when you do it and how that hopefully benefits your development, whatever it is you're working on, uh, that's the challenge. I feel very lucky, very grateful to live in the times we live in, I think, as a, as a musician, as a songwriter, especially as a producer. There are so many incredible tools at our disposal, uh, and they're very accessible. They're financially, I think, they're reasonably accessible. Also, these things about like analog versus digital recording methods come up in a very broad sense, but I think the fantastic thing is that we have the option to explore so much through the internet and, uh, and through things like eBay and secondhand options. There's there's a real ability, say, to decide to use the best aspects of recording technology that have, you know, have gone in the last century. We're truly standing on the shoulders of giants, and uh, there are many giants around, and we can hop on, you know, we can hop between their shoulders. And that wasn't always the case um, if you were aspiring to record an album or write songs. It's interesting for me because um, I was saying before that sometimes I think the uh, the best music I've made is when I've made recordings or made tracks or songs that are the least like the music I listen to or the least like what I would expect of myself. It's kind of like I don't quite know what I'm making, but then I realise as I finish a song, I'm like, I've made some kind of weird instrumental hip-hop Bollywood kind of track. It's great. Like, I kind of like all these things and I never would have expected to make this. That's one of the things of um, having access to a great wealth of materials and kind of trawling through them and putting things together and, and seeing the unexpected results. When you have happy results, that's one of the great things. And I feel very lucky to have, you know, through computers and through the internet, the great potential for that to happen, for that to be part of my process of making songs. I sometimes feel a little bit disinterested in some of the music that results from this great melting pot that is the internet's world of stuff that's out there, the kind of great flattening of cultural history. It's almost like everybody's experience through the internet um, of history and of culture is um, it's inherently postmodern. Like I remember going to uni as an undergrad 12 years ago and, you know, doing studies in postmodernism, maybe still at a time then when it felt like you could choose to use postmodernism as a creative aesthetic. It was like an option. I almost feel like delving into YouTube, that's just everybody's experience now. It's like whether it's a Hollywood film trailer next to a home video of a musician somewhere in a third world country 
to mashups that are already pulling from multiple places as disparate as that and, and, and sort of presenting them to you as a reconstituted new thing. You can just cycle through all these different things and it's very hard to get a sense of maybe where they've come from or what the context is. Sometimes that's exactly what leads to really exciting new interesting things like mashups of things that were completely unlikely and unexpected. But I do feel like sometimes I hear a lot of stuff that maybe especially from younger creatives because they don't haven't looked into a lot of a context or the origins of these things they just make me feel like I'm just hearing a bit of a confused melange of stuff. Yeah, it's just a confusingly postmodern blamange, let's say. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I think that's kind of a challenge is to, um, and that's something I strive for really hard with the stuff that I do, I guess, is uh, trying to really follow all the strands, look at origins, and really think about the context of what I'm writing. You know, why am I writing a lyric? What is it I want to express? What is behind, say you know, what I'm writing, all the sounds I'm pulling in and why. And it's, sometimes it's really hard. I don't want to be too clinical about it. I really still want to follow my intuition musically, just about textures, you know, things that feel like the right aesthetic choices, just that make sense to me. I guess it's just a taste thing. It's just the inevitable um, double-edged sword that everything always is. There's always two sides to everything. For all the kind of really interesting, exciting things that come with, say, developments like this wonderful flowering, flattening of culture, or whatever it is, through the internet, through things like YouTube, through great access, there's also another side, which is potentially deep pits of confusion and lack of context and a kind of just drifting in whatever town. <laughs> I was lucky to see Leonard Cohen play a concert recently, and his words and his music really reminded me of how powerful simplicity, when it's really beautifully considered, when it feels honest, when it comes, yeah, when it's honest, but when it feels like it's there's really been a lot of thought and time put into it, it feeling right, how incredibly powerful and timeless that is. Leonard Cohen has written so many songs that feel that way to me, and especially in his recordings, his early songs, where it's, you know, it's a voice and a guitar often with the most minimal of accompaniment. It sometimes makes me really feel like with all the kind of um, technology and sampling and all the kind of odd sounds and things and the, the lengths that I go to to kind of try and make these odd technicolor excursions into you know and, and, and reaching far for concepts that bring lyrics and sounds together I sometimes feel like wow maybe I'm really trying too hard I'm way I'm just over complicating this way too much because I'm lucky I can actually I can sing I can play a little bit of piano and a, a very minimal amount of guitar but probably enough to write songs, you know, with the kind of extent of chords or guitar playing that someone like Leonard Cohen does. And so what is it? And, you know, maybe I'm focusing on the wrong things. So it does make me think maybe there isn't any indispensable piece of technology. I sometimes think, well, is my MacBook indispensable to me as a creative person, as a music maker? And then I go, well, I mean, no, I, I could just sit at a piano with a dictaphone or a tape machine. I would, I would make do with the limitations of just a tape machine if that was all there was, if I couldn't. Is electricity a fundamental, you know, something I couldn't do without? I do wonder about that. That's probably the biggest broad one. That's been one of the biggest changes, I guess, in the 20th century creation, capturing of sound, of music, and of its reproduction, of the transmission of information. Electricity underlies so much of it. So um, maybe that is something, I guess, I would really struggle with that. But I think it'd be really interesting. I sometimes feel like I'm very drawn to kind of want to avoid all those things. So yeah, to get back to trying to just write songs on a guitar. I've never really done it. I can't really play guitar, like I said, but I, you know, I'd like to try. As much as my uh, my instrument collection and my trinkety percussion collection continues to expand, and it's pretty vast, really. It's all these things. Well, I mean, I'm often finding myself pulling two coconut shells or something out of my box of percussion tricks and going, "This is the greatest percussion instrument." Listen to the things you can do just with rubbing on the sides and you know, the overtones of this. Blah blah blah. It's just like it, simplicity speaks very loudly. The things maybe that I use the most that probably really, you know, when I stop to think about it, are the most incredible in terms of uh, creative opportunities they offer me every day. Uh, it is, you know, it's my laptop and the software that runs on it, which specifically for me, Ableton Live. That's really fundamental, I guess, to how I approach organising sound, editing things, making songs. And I don't know, at the other, I feel like, you know, my voice is a, a bit of biotechnology, and I feel very lucky that it's... That it's there, the one time in my life that I lost my voice, uh, which is after, I was in my early 20s, I think I'd spent a night singing really screamily in a loud club with a lot of smoke before they'd um, put smoking restrictions into clubs. I cleared my throat really violently the next day in the shower and I think burst a blood vessel in my throat, so I lost my voice. Couldn't speak or make a noise at all for about two to three weeks and I felt so disconnected, I felt so kind of glum 
so sad that I couldn't sing along with music in the car or just express the melody I heard in my head. I realised how much uh, I'd just taken for granted the fact that I can make noises with myself <laughs> that actually, I don't know, that please me, that kind of relax me and soothe me. That as a fundamental, I think, um, I feel very connected to that, just lucky to have that chance to have a voice that I can do stuff with. <laughs> I'd say it's certainly not to be expected that when you are in a relationship with somebody that you also inspire each other creatively, that you also really appreciate each other's work, that you really love each other's work, not necessarily all of the time, but even that you love any of the work, say, that your partner makes. That's actually, I think, it's quite unlikely. And so it's all the more special when that happens. And so I really I feel very grateful for that because there's so much work musically and, and you know, last few years visually that Tash does that I think is fantastic and that I'm, you know, that I love to look at and um so that's a real blessing see what did i tell you what a winner that was wally debacker and artist tash parker with part two of their combined inspiration bomb for big hearted business where we teach creative people about business and business people about creativity in ways that make sense for more inspiration bombs you know where to go just come to the site there's a whole library of them waiting there for you to be inspired by we hope you love it and the best time ever bye from claire bowditch and all the bhb crew